against Philadelphia, and the Phillies, of course, try to snap a losing streak. Bill Singer completes his warm-ups, and we're all set to play ball. The Dodgers and the Phillies from beautiful Dodger Stadium. And now for the play-by-play, -play, here's Vince Skelly. Vinny? Thank you, Jerry. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Sunday to you, wherever you may be. It has come up bright and shiny at Dodger Stadium in the third and final game between the Dodgers and the Phillies, with Terry Harmon to start it off at shortstop and leading it off, then Johnny Briggs and Richie Allen. Bill Singer looks in to get his first sign. Bill Sudeikis returning to the starting lineup today at third base. And the first pitch to Harmon, a ground ball to Wills. Morey is up with it, flips to first in time for the out. One pitch and one away. For the first time in a couple of days, that ground ball in the shortstop area took true house. The Dodgers have changed the infield a little bit. It had gotten just too hard, and the baseballs were taking erratic house, so they have softened it just a little. And that ball rolls straight and true to Will. Here's Johnny Briggs. Singer into the windup, delivers, and the pitch high and away. Ball one. To the groundkeeper's credit, of course, they follow orders. They had it hardened. And then we're told to loosen it just a dab. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Johnny Briggs, left-hand batter. He takes the strike in the count one and one. Bill Singer trying to win his 17th into the windup and the 1-1 pitch on the way. A fastball outside, ball two, two and one. You don't think about it. Naturally, you come to the ballpark and see a game. But among other things, Bill Singer's right foot is heavily padded. It really fills up that shoe. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Popped in the air around the mound. Singer turns to direct traffic. Wills comes over near Sudeikis, but Sudeikis walks in front of Wills and makes the catch. So Briggs, a pop fly, two out, and the batter will be Richie Allen. Richie Allen, who wakes him up around the league when he comes up to the plate. Last night, Allen struck out four times, and the crowd really ate him up. Let's we'll see how he goes today against Singer. Bill's first pitch, big third. Swung on and missed, on one. Allen with 29 home runs, 66 RBIs. In 88 games, he has struck out 110 times. Now the strike one pitch, the same breaking ball in there, strike two. Andy Olsen the plate umpire with Barlick, Vargo, and Kibler out on the line. 0-2 to Richie Allen. Singer ready in the strike two pitch. Way outside, ball one. When Bill Singer pushes off the rubber, he has a tendency to pinch his right toe. Sandy Koufax had that problem. Jim Bunning does. And unless that toe and foot is heavily padded, he can really hurt himself. The one-two breaking ball got him swinging. So Allen has struck out five consecutive times. Four last night and now today. Phillies are gone in order at the end of half an inning. The Phillies nothing and the Dodgers coming up. You know, it wasn't long ago when the Dodgers were known as the bums and they went to some ridiculous extremes during that nickname. A Dodger outfielder was once hit on the head by a fly ball. They tell us, and oh, the shame when three Dodger runners ended up on third base at the same time. Yes, fans still remember that famous Dodger who obliged the crowd by tipping his hat and the bird flew out of it. Who was that? Sure, Casey Stengel. But today there's a new team and there's a new way to enjoy Dodger excitement. Fans are discovering that a good time is more thrilling with the chilling refreshment of Schlitz malt liquor. You just can't outscore the bolder, brawnier performance of the drink inspired by a bowl. Schlitz malt liquor. Aged longer with more hops and more. So anytime the action picks up, be sure to pick up a can of Schlitz malt liquor. There isn't a better way to beat a thirst. And believe us, the word is out. Nobody makes malt liquor like Schlitz. Nobody. Bottom of the first, the Phillies out in order. The Dodgers with Wills, Mota, and Davis against right-hander Rick Wise. Wise, 11 and 10 with the lead. Rick is 0 and 1 with the Dodgers. The Dodgers piled up a lot of runs to beat the Phillies that day. He himself 
allowed only one earned run, but the Dodgers won the game 12 to 4. So at first glance, you'd think they really ripped him, but an error hurt him badly. So Rick Wise, 5 and 3 lifetime, ready to pitch to Maury Will. First one is low and inside, ball one. We'll be playing scoreboard all day today. The Giants and the Mets in a double header. Cincinnati, as usual, out in front and trying to hang on. Boy, that ball club is really wearing out the people at Crosley Field. Will fouls it away, one and one. The Reds invariably pile up a big lead. And just as invariably, the starting pitcher is gone. They go to the bullpen, and it's a question of can they make it? Well, it's the same story today at Crosley Field. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch to Maury Wells. Inside, ball two, two and one. There was a delay up at San Francisco, and we get the report now. Ron Hunt, the second baseman for the Giants, was beamed. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Wills, a strike. Fortunately, Hunt had the batting helmet on. As a safety precaution, he was taken off the field on a stretcher, but the report is that he is conscious and talking. And so hopefully, little Muggsy will be all right. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Maury Wills, foul back. In that Cincinnati game, the Reds got five runs in the second inning, made it seven to two at the end of five. The Cardinals added two in the sixth and one in the seventh. So they're now in the bottom of the seventh inning and Cincinnati hanging on to what is now a seven to five lead. Two-two pitch on the way to Maury Will. Swung on and missed strike three. In talking about Cincinnati, what a tremendous attraction when you realize the Dodgers have double headers with the Reds here on the 16th and on the 23rd in Crosley Field. Double headers with the Reds. Should be wild ones. Manny Mota the batter. Mota hitting 342 as a Dodgers, 334 overall. Rick Wise into the windup, and the right-hander's first one a little high. Ball one. One and oh. Dodgers have won seven of 11 from the fills. Three of the five played here. One oh pitch to Mota. In there at the knees and on the edge for a strike in the count one and one. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch on the way. Moda takes a half swing and hits it out in front of the plate. Down to get it is Wise, and he throws him out. So Moda thrown out by Rick Wise. Two down, and here he comes. The talk of the town, Willie Davis. Willie Davis is two games away from the all-time Dodgers streak of 29 set by Zach Weed. His 27-game hitting streak that he brings up to the plate right now ties him with Duke Snyder for the second longest streak in Dodger history. Duke had a 27-game streak in 1953. I think it was 53. 1953. The pitch to Willie Davis over for a strike on one. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock ballgame, the Dodgers and the New York Mets, and the Mets have become cover boys. They'll be on the cover of Time magazine. However, that story might be a little late, depending upon what happens today. The Cubs are winning. The Mets are playing a doubleheader with the Giants. The Mets started the day three and a half back of the Cubs, and I'm sure that Time got the idea when the Mets crawled to within two. Strike one pitch on the way. Willie skies away from a fastball up and in. One ball, one strike. There's a great quote in the paper, and it just shows you how confident a ball player can get after he's been around, and it is not misplaced confidence when you've been playing in the big leagues for eight years. Willie said he just feels he can hit 330. The one one pitch. Outside ball two, two and one. Well, he's hitting 317 right now. He also thinks according to the quote in the papers. He might even be able to hit 400 before he's through. The 
Uh, needless to say, he's feeling chipper. 2-1 pitch on the corner, strike two. Two and two to Willie. West Parker on deck. Two out in the first inning, no score. Rick Wise ready in the pitch to Davis. Ground ball to the hole. It's short. Up with it is Terry Harmon and throws him out by a stride. So the young shortstop nails Willie. He's gone. So the Dodgers in order. And at the end of one, no score. Say, when you think of baseball, you just naturally think of hot dogs. They're go-togethers. But have you ever thought what it takes to make the perfect hot dog or wiener, as Farmer John calls them? Well, first of all, there's the quality of the meat. Farmer John wieners are not only all meat, but the best meat. U.S. inspected fresh eastern corn-fed pork and fresh, lean, juicy, homegrown beef. Then there's the matter of grinding the meat. Farmer John grinds it so finely, his wieners are the smoothest you've ever tasted. Finally, of course, the flavor. Farmer John smokes his wieners just like he smokes his famous bacon over native western wood. That's why they have a wild and wonderful western flavor like no other's. So if you're looking for the perfect wieners or perfect hot dogs, if you wish, look no further than Farmer John All-Meat Wieners. Gold medal winners at the California State Fair. And if you don't see them in your store, ask for them. Why in the world settle for anything less than the perfect wieners? Farmer John. Through one inning, no score in the ballgame. The Dodgers and the Phils. While Bill Singer loosens up, we can duck in some scores for you. 6-2, the Cubs leading Atlanta. Kenny Holtzman not only pitching, he's hit a two-run home run. That's at the end of six. The Mets and the Giants score it to the end of three. Ron Hunt was beamed by Tom Seaver in that game and had to leave the game. Houston leading Pittsburgh, one nothing at the end of four. Cincinnati, seven, and the Cardinals, five at the end of seven. The American League, Minnesota, four. Boston, nothing at the end of seven. 2-2, two -two, Cleveland, Chicago at the end of five. Detroit, four. Seattle, two at the end of five. Washington beat Oakland 8-3. to three. Frank Howard hit his 42nd home run, among other things, in the nation's capital. Hit swung on and missed by Johnny Callison. The end of seven, 5-3, the Yankees leading Kansas City. Callison hitting 263, 14 home runs, 44 RBIs. He's a good one that the White Sox had get away. Strike one pitch to John is swung on and missed, strike two. On deck, the quiet man from San Diego, Darren Johnson. Second inning, no score. Bright, sunshiny day at the ballpark, and Singer comes back 0-2, and the fastball away. Ball one. One and two. History was set last night at Dodger Stadium when the, the Dodger Mighty Mites played their fathers, and for the first time in history, in the Dodger dressing room, a diaper was changed. The pitch to Callison fouled back. One and two, the count of Johnny Callison. It was Ted Sizemore, who's a brand new happy for the second time, who changed the diaper in the dressing room. Johnny Callison is a high foul off to the left of the plate. That'll carry out of play and go deep in the lower deck. And the count remains one and two. So Callison keeping everybody up, fouling them back and fouling them off to the left. One and two. Stringer into the windup in the one-two pitch. The drive to right center field. Willie Davis and Willie Crawford. And it is who? I'm not sure who. It's Davis. Willie Davis caught the ball. And Willie Crawford twisted and went falling away. They almost collided on that one. So Callison flies to Davis, one away. And here is Darren Johnson. Darren with 16 home runs, 65 RBIs. 263 average. Second inning, no score. Bill Singer delivers, and the first one chases Johnson out of there. Ball one. 
The New York Mets here tomorrow afternoon, Tuesday and Wednesday night. Tomorrow, 1 p.m., Jim Bunning and Jerry Kuzman. The 1-0 pitch, Johnson takes inside ball two. Dodgers have a lot of work to do at the Mets. The Mets really have shaken them up, sweeping all six games played at Shea Stadium in New York. Here's a 2-0 pitch to Johnson. A high pop foul to the right of the plate, and coming after it is Haller, but it's questionable, and Tommy will not have a play. It's the dugout roof. Back into the stands. Uh, they have a good-natured scramble for that one. 2-1. and one. The Dodgers will take a look at the same three pitchers who gave them a bad time at New York, Kuzman, Gentry, Cardwell. The last time they faced the Mets, they were relieved that they were not going to see Seaver, and they still lost. Johnson, it's a line drive. Base hit to center field. Willie Davis up to get it. So done, a solid single with one out, and the batter will be Ron Stone. Number three, left fielder, Ron Stone. Ron Stone is from Corning, California, makes his home in Stockton. 6'2", 195 pounders, 27 years old. Stone, as he comes to the plate today, hitting 242. Throw to first base, Johnson back to the bag. Stone, left-hand batter. So manager George Meyer trying to get some left-handed sticks in the lineup. Singer another throw to first base, and again Johnson back. Darren is not a base stealing threat. What the Dodgers are worrying about is the hit and run play. The pitch to Stone taken for sight. That's an open invitation to have a left-hand hitter up and the runner at first, with the first baseman holding the runner on. That's a pretty good gap. Wills and Sizemore are trying to figure out who's going to cover it. 0-1 to Darren Johnson. The pitch is outside. He ran up as if to bunt. One ball, one strike. Cubs added a run. They now lead 7-2 over Atlanta at the end of the six and a half. Will's talking to Singer. Perhaps wants Bill to be make sure to know who's covering in the event of a hit and run play. 1-1 one one to Ron Stone. Another throw to first, not in time. The Dodgers play Stone to go the other way. Willie Davis shading him in left center. Mota deep and near the line in left. 1-1 one, one pitch. Stone hits a ground ball to Wills. He feeds to Sizemore. He goes to Parker. So the double play, 6-4-3. No runs, one hit, nobody left. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score. Christown TV and the Christown Shopping Center, 19th Avenue and West Bethany Home Road, presents from Magnavox, a new color television set that will be as important to viewers as new supersonic airplanes are to air travelers. From Magnavox comes the revolutionary achievement which solves the problem of annoying color variations in color TV. It's total automatic color TV. Total automatic color from Magnavox makes tuning of color TV so simple a child can tune it perfectly. Total automatic color from Magnavox eliminates annoying color variations and the need for bothersome picture adjustments for tuning. Magnavox now lets you select the flesh tone colors most pleasing to you and keeps them that way in every picture from every program on any channel or network. Just set it once and forget it. No variance of colors from program to commercial, from program to program, or from channel to channel. See the complete line of Magnavox Color TV. Now with total automatic color at Chris Town TV in the Chris Town Shopping Center, 19th Avenue and West Bethany Home Road. Chris Town TV and Magnavox, a colorful combination. Bottom of the second inning, no score in the ball game. Wes Parker, Willie Crawford, and Bill Sudeikis coming up in that order against right-hander Rick Wise. On the message board, happy birthday to John Van Osdale, celebrating his 80th birthday. The Dodgers trying to celebrate today, so Parker will start it off. No score. Up at Candlestick Park, scoreless in the fourth inning, but Mike McCormick has been relieved by Ron Herbel, so apparently the Mets are up to something. So here's Parker. West has a modest six-game hitting streak. But it's better to project and show that he has hit safely in 19 of his last 24 games. 
Wise delivers. Fastball for strike at the knees. On one. When Parker came back from the hospital, he really came roaring back. He's played in 14 games. Just 10 RBIs over that span. Strike one pitch to West. Ground ball to the left is short. Tricky hop, but Harmon stays with it and throws him out. So Parker rolls to short, one away, and Willie Crawford the batter. All we get is an old pro in the pork business. Farmer John knows that what counts most in pork products is freshness. The fresher, the better. That's why Farmer John brings you pork products that are as fresh as you can buy. Willie Crawford, who had to act more like an Indian rubber man in right field on the drive by Johnny Callison to avoid a collision with Willie Davis. Now coming up. Rick Wise delivers, and Crawford takes the strike. Going on. Willie hitting 260. The next one to Crawford makes him pull away. One and one. Time called now. There is some fool. In fact, it's more than a fool. Somebody is uh, throwing things down on the field, and time is called. I can't, you know, you can't believe people in this world. There's just no way to believe people. How could anybody in his right mind come to a ballpark with thousands of ladies and children and people out to enjoy themselves and do something like that? And they are bottles that were thrown out on the field, glass bottles. It's unbelievable. Friends, if you see anybody sitting next to you, and someone must have been next to the guy who did it, uh, just quietly excuse yourself and go over and uh, pinpoint him, won't you, for the safety of all of us? Please? Thank you. The time is called. That's outrageous. You know, in this day and age, we are getting so, we hear so much about people flaunting rules, flaunting authority. And I will say one thing, this is one of the better police parks in the league. And we're happy to say that whenever a kid runs out on the field, we notice the reaction here is less favorable to a youngster breaking the rules than it is in most any other park. And that's where it starts. I don't know how many times we've seen a kid run on the field, then a policeman go after. And again, the announcement being made that if you have spotted the guy, the girl, the character, the mindless soul who did it, then please report him for the safety of everybody in the ballpark. Because whoever did that is not well, not well at all. Time called while they are cleaning up the broken bottles. So Jim Gilliam helping with a broom, helping the kids pick it up. But boy, it's shocking, isn't it? Well, it's like you try to explain to your children, there are people in this world who are like that. And the best we can do is try and find them and put them someplace for their own benefit as well as all of society. Oh, well, we're just about ready. But that's about as uh, I've seen it happen before but not to the extent of that, where a sack came out on the field. Okay. Boy, oh boy. Willie Crawford at the plate, one out in the second inning, no score, and Rick Wise into the windup and delivers, and it swung on and foul tip. One and two. Rick Wise checking. Outfield playing Crawford straight away. One out, second inning, no score. Right-handers, fastball is down and away. Ball two. Two and two. Dodgers and Phillies concluding their season's work. The Mets will be here tomorrow. Now the 2-2 pitch on the way, fouled back by Crawford. So he's still there. Two balls, two strikes. Willie is slowly maturing to become a good major league ball player, and he can only get better. He is just starting to learn his trade. A 260 average shows that he has learned quite a few lessons. Willie waiting. 
Wise checking, now Rick into the windup. 2-2 two, two pitch on the way. Outside, ball three. On deck, marking his return to the lineup today, Bill Sudeikis. Wise reading Watkins. Now the right-hander, 3-2 pitch on the way. Crawford, it's a drive to right field. Callison goes back, and this ball is gone. Crawford. It's a low line drive that was just taken off as it went into the right field bleachers and the Dodgers lead one to nothing. And for Crawford, his ninth home run and his 37 RBI. Oh, the most dramatic improvement with Willie Crawford, he doesn't strike out as he used to. Here's Sudeikis. He takes high ball one. Up until about three weeks ago, Willie Crawford had a very bad strikeout ratio, but no longer. He's done a fine job. Sudeikis takes a breaking ball for a strike in the count one and one, and Davey Watkins wants to talk to his pitcher, so let's pause the station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. You can charge your purchases and take many months to pay at Paul Johnson Distributing Company, 7144 North 23rd Avenue, Phoenix, where you can use your Arizona Bank Bank America card. This is KTAR in Phoenix. Bill Sudeikis at the plate. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Fastball outside, ball two. Two and one. One nothing Dodgers, second inning. Crawford is just homered. Rick Wise into the windup. Sudeikis hits one on the ground of the shortstop Harmon, who stays with him. Terry flicks across to Allen for the out. Two down. That'll bring up Tommy Haller. Tom Haller batting 266. Five home runs, 35 runs batted in. Rick Wise has allowed his 15th home run on that ball that Crawford hit out. The Dodgers, as a team, have hit 83 home runs now. Here's a pitch to Tom Haller, taken for a strike. On one. No further report out of Candlestick. We told you that Ron Herbal relieved Mike McCormick. It's scoreless through three. The strike one pitch in there. Strike two. Oh and two. For Cincinnati, again, the same story. They led 7-2, 7-4, 7-5. Merritt, the starter, relieved by Carroll. Now Granger has to relieve Carroll in the eighth. Strike two pitch to Haller. A high pop fly, back of third and down the line. A trio of fills in pursuit, and it's the middleman, Terry Harmon, the shortstop, who makes the catch. So the Dodgers get a run on a hit, a home run by Willie Crawford, and at the end of two, Dodgers won till he's nothing. Hey, Hobie Alter, who do you look up to when everyone around you is being wiped out by some wild surf at Waimea Bay? I look up to the Haleiwa life-saving team, but usually all I see when I look up is another 25-foot wave. Hey, Hobie Alter, who do you look up to when your car isn't taking the big hills like it should? I look up to 76. Those guys can really spot the trouble fast. They really know cars. They're trained that way. <laughs> When you're looking for someone to look after you, look up to 76. All powerful and service, but you want to see. Look up to 76. Look up to 76 to pinpoint your car's problem. And look up to 76 to keep it from happening again. With the finest in auto care products, like our Union Super Motor Oil, the oil designed for today's super cars. When you're looking for someone to look after you, look up to 76. Through two innings here at Dodger Stadium, the Dodgers one run, one hit. The home run by Willie Crawford. The Phillies no runs, one hit. Bill Singer and Rick Wise. 
Nothing new on the scoreboard, so we'll just wait until we get further reports. Let's go to the third. And for more play-by-play, here's Jerry Doggett. All right, Vinny, and it'll be Dave Watkins, the catcher, followed by Rojas and Wise. Bill Singer with a run to work on now as we get set to play. Watkins batting 184, has three home runs and eight runs batted in. The Phillies move on to San Diego after this game. They're trying to snap a losing streak which began in San Francisco. All right, Watkins now waits as Singer delivers. Bunt try, miss, strike one. Sudeikis at third, Wills at short, Sizemore at second, Parker at first. Crawford in right, Davis in center, Moda in left for the Dodgers. Haller catching, Bill Singer trying to get his 17th win. He's won 16 and lost eight. Now the 0-1 pitch, Watkins takes a curve strike. He ducked under the pitch and it was in there for a strike and he couldn't believe it. <laughs> so Dave Watkins was ducking under a breaking ball and it caught the inside corner. 0-2 the count. Now the windup and the pitch on the way. Fastball just outside. One ball and two strikes. Several players trying for 19 today. Seaver is 18. Necro was trying for 19. He will not get it. He had to go out, and the Cubs are winning that game from Atlanta. A swing and a miss, and down goes Watson. Strikeout number two for Bill Singer. So Nico, 18 and 11, has been knocked out. Seaver apparently is throwing some runs by the Mets. At least the Giants have made a pitching change. And the Mets came up with five. So that gives Seaver a little cushion, trying for his 19th. Here today, Bill Singer trying for his 17th. Claude Osteen got his 18th last night. That's the first game of a doubleheader at San Francisco, by the way. The pitch to Rojas to strike. Here's the windup and the pitch down. Swinging a fly ball to left center field. Willie Davis moving over. He's there and makes the catch for the out. So Rojas skies to Davis in left center field. Two up and two down, and here's Wise coming on. Rick Wise, the pitcher, has 16 hits, one home run. Not a bad hitting pitcher, 16 for 55. So Rick Wise comes on now. The Cubs have added another run and lead Atlanta now, eight to two, playing in the bottom of the eighth inning at Atlanta. Pitch comes high for a ball, one ball and no strike. Now the 1-0 pitch. Curve is a strike one and one. One one pitch. Swung on and foul tip out of Haller's mask, and it is one and two. Tom takes the mask off, walks back toward the singer, gets a new ball. One ball, two strikes. Ball and two strikes to Rick Wise with two outs, third inning. The Dodgers lead one to nothing on Willie Crawford's home run. Pitch is swung on a miss, strike three, and down goes Wise to retire the side. Three strikeouts to Singer, and the Phillies out in order, and the score at the end of two and a half innings of play. Dodgers one, Philadelphia nothing. To everybody in Bakersfield, Berkey wholesaler Ellery Mulock asked us to say hello for him. Ellery hopes you'll enjoy every game during the 1969 season, along with Berkey, the comfortable bear. On the message board, they have the score, New York 5, Giants nothing through three and a half innings, and underneath it says, Mets, we love you. Tomorrow, grr. <laughs> That's pretty good. Mets are here tomorrow, of course, to open up a three-game series with Tuesday, Gentry, and Cardwell do the pitch for the Mets against Bunning, Sutton, and Osteen. Teddy Sizemore coming to bat now here in the bottom of third, and Ted has been one of the Dodger hot hitters of late. His average up to 270 as he steps into the batter's box. He's gone 6 for 10, and during the past 18 games back to August the 10th, he's had 27 hits for a 403 average. 
And he's hit safe in 16 of the 18 games during that streak. Pitch swung on it, fouled away. Strike one, 0 and 1. Another note on Sizemore, he's never hit less than 296 in professional ball. And he's played on three teams, and they've all won tennis. So in addition to being a good player, he might be a good luck charm. So Sizemore waiting. Strike one count, wise into the windup, and the pitch on the way to Teddy. Slider for strike, and it's 0 and 2. Sizemore. At 330 his first year at Tri City, 296 at Albuquerque, which was his low, and 314 for Spokane last year. And he's moving up now, up to 270. The pitch on the way. Too high with a breaking pitch. One and two. One ball, two strikes. To Ted Sizemore, the Dodgers rookie of the year candidate. Sudeikis, of course, would be classified as the rookie of the year also, but Bill has not played as much as Sizemore. The one-two pitch. Taken uh, low. Watkins started to throw it around. Pitch a little low inside. Ball two and it's a two-two count. Another reminder, tomorrow's game, a day game. Labor Day, one o'clock. Bunning and Kuzman. Tuesday and Wednesday night games with the Mets. Now Wise ready, the two-two pitch. Teddy swings a line drive base at the left center field. That one might get through. He's around first, heads for second. Cut off by Stone, the four to second base. He's safe. The blazing bat of Teddy Sizemore continues to sizzle as he lines one to left center field. Stone got over to cut it off on the grass, and by that time, Sizemore was in the second base. A two-base hit for Ted. So he's been really going. Here's Finger at bat now. We'll try to move him along. Allen moves up a step or two at first base in case the butt is on. Johnson plays in at third. Sizemore on second. Finger waiting. And wide pitches. It's butt missed. And the strike one popped out of the glove of Watkins, but no advance. So Finger trying to bunt, missed it completely. 0-1. So for Sizemore, 17 of 19. It all began when Teddy went, I think, 0 for 20. And they had a little session with batting instructor Dixie Walker. And that got him straightened away. Strike one count. Finger waiting, Sizemore off second. Here comes Rojas charging the plate, and the pitch is too low. That's a new one. Instead of Allen coming in, Rojas, the second baseman, was coming in. So that's a new wrinkle on the bunt defense. Allen stayed at first. Rojas, the second, charged the plate. The other infielders, Johnson stayed near the bag, and uh, the shortstop, Harmon, moved towards second. Now Allen moves up a step or two on the grass, and we'll see if they have the same maneuver. Here's the pitch to swing, and he swings away, hits it by Allen. And up with it will be Rojas who runs to the bag. And on the play, Sizemore goes to third. So Finger had a full swing, and Allen that time was charging the plate with Rojas laying back. And it's a good thing. Had they both been charging, that would have been through them. But as it was, Rojas picked the ball up on the grass and carried it to the bag in time for the out. It was not a sacrifice, a full swing for Finger, but he got his man over. So he grounds it by Allen, retrieved by Rojas. We made the put out on assistance. Sizemore to third on the ground out. And here's Maury Wills, who struck out his first time up. And now the Phillies bring the infield up. Wills trying to get the RBI. He's driven in 38 for the year. Wise with a pitch. Maury hits a foul over the backstop. Strike one. On one. Sizemore, good speed at third. Wills on at first. Rick Wise checking signs. Here's the look now. And the pitch on the way to Maury. Taken high for a ball. One and one. Johnson edging in at third just in case the bunt should be on. Allen playing up at first base. One one. Maury waiting in the pitch. Taken high for a ball. And it is two and one. Turn one. Wise working again. Ties more short lead away from third. Johnson tried to hold him on. And now Wise cut again. The one-one pitch. More he takes high. Ball three. Three and one. Three balls and a strike to Will. We're in the third inning. 
Cardinals failed to score in the eighth inning, and the Reds lead them by a score of seven to five. Three one pitch now to Will. On the way. Boy, it's a line drive base hit the right center field. The run is in. Two to nothing, Dodgers. So Maury lines a single over the drawn in infield. Sizemore scores, and Moda now will be the batter. Two to nothing, Dodgers. Moda grounded out to the pitcher his first time up. Will's on at first, and we'll see if Maury tries to steal in this spot. He has stolen 35. 19 is a Dodger. All right, Maury on first to throw over there, and he's back easily. The throw was high. Wise has turned quickly to throw it. Maury again sneaks off. About a two, three-step lead. The pitch to Moto. They pitch out, and he's not going. So Watkins called for the pitch out. Maury holding up. One in, one on, one out. Dodgers lead two to nothing. We're in the third inning. Size more doubles. Scored on the base hit by Wills after he went to third on the ground out. Here's a play to first again and Maury back easily. That was just a lob throw by Wise that time. Mets lead the Giants five nothing in the fourth inning. There he goes. Here's the throw to Watkins and it is in time. Maury is out. I think Watkins wanted the pitch out, but the pitch was in the strike zone for a strike, and he still made the throw in time to get Maury. Shortstop handled the throw. So Maury, who had stolen eight bases in his last six games, had a string going of nine consecutive preps, and that's snapped by Watkins here. The 1-1 pitch to Moda. Foul out of play down the right field line. So Maury, who was running well, is thrown out by the Philadelphia catcher. One and two to Manny Moda. Two outs. Rick Wise checking signs. Moda waiting. On deck, Willie Davis. Now Rick set again into the windup and the pitch on the way to Moda. Line drive along the right field line. It's going to be just foul by about three or four feet. Bounces into the lower stand. The motor shot the right field, but he fouled it away. The Phillies play him over that way. Callison was not too far off the line. One ball, two strikes. Motor comes back to try it again. Manny hitting 334 with three home runs, 25 runs batted in. Motor up, waiting. And Wise with the windup in the pitch, pulling a ground ball to shortstop. Harmon, big hop. Throw is in time, and the side is retired. The motor grounds out, but the Dodgers pick up a run on two hits, and none left on. The score through three innings. Dodgers two, and the Phillies nothing. Well, say, you baseball fans with young children know how important it is for youngsters to eat a hearty breakfast. Farmer John would like to suggest his lean, luscious Farmer John sausage. Farmer John makes his sausage with all the best meat, not just the trimmings, and he makes it to an old-time Western recipe with only natural herbs and spices. So there's a wonderful Western flavor in every marvelous meaty morsel. Farmer John's sausage is as fresh as you can buy. It's made from fresh eastern corn-fed pork, brought out here live, then U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. Well, that's why Farmer John's sausage always has a rosy, fresh complexion. It never looks gray, like sausage shipped in frozen or cold storage. So be sure to pick up a package of Farmer John's fresh country sausage next time you shop. It's the sausage that won the gold medal at the California State Fair, and you'll agree. It's the east and most in quality and the west and most in flavor. That's Farmer John, luscious Farmer John sausage. Through three innings, it is two to nothing Dodgers on three hits. Phillies no runs in one hit. Bill Singer now warming up with Tom Haller, all set to go. Into the fourth, Phillies coming up back to play, and here's Ben. So far, the Dodgers doing it with dispatch, a home run by Willie Crawford and a double followed by a clutch single. The Phillies trying to get some back. We'll have Terry Harmon, the shortstop, followed by Johnny Briggs, and then Richie Allen. Bill Singer has allowed one hit through three innings, a line single to center by Darren Johnson, who was then doubled up as Ron Stone hit into a double play. Bill has pitched to the minimum nine batters in three innings, breaking ball over for a strike to Harmon, 0-1. Harmon playing for Don Money. Terry, 25. 
He's from Toledo. Strike one pitch is hit down the right field line. Crawford racing across the line in foul ground. It drops untouched and bounces into the stand. Willie picks it up and flips it back in after it had come out and receives this quarter to the foul. 0 and 2 to count. a final and Bob Gibson lost his 10th Jimmy Merritt won his 16th Harlan fouls a pitch away upstairs and a young girl in a print dress held on to that one well scout so she juggled it a little bit but it was a very difficult chance Harmon hits one over the mound slanting in front of the bag is well to throw him out So Harmon grounds to short, the batter Johnny Briggs. Johnny Briggs, left hand hitting center fielder, popped up to third baseman Bill Sudeikis in the first inning. Briggs takes outside, ball one, one and all. Oh. Two nothing Dodgers, fourth inning. Singer comes back, breaking ball away, ball two. On deck, Richie Allen. The next one is driven to right center field. The Corbett going back and up and makes the catch for the out. Got a good jump on that line drive. So Briggs lines to Crawford, and here's Richie Allen. The last time Richie Allen hit the ball was his last at bat Friday night. And when he hit it, he hit it. He hit it into the bleachers in right field. But last night he struck out four times, and Singer struck him out in the first inning today. Bill DeLaris, fastball for a strike. He got him on breaking ball the first time, and he shoots one over for a strike. Now the strike one pitch, breaking ball fouled away, and so Richie's in a hole, 0 and 2. Allen is a remarkable player in the sense that he has struck out 111 times and is still hitting 311. You realize the percentages when he does make contact. Fastball got him, strike three, call. He has struck out six consecutive times. They're gone in the fourth, and at the end of three and a half innings, the Dodgers two and the Phillies nothing. Kemper headquarters in the Valley is Camp West Industries, 2802 Grand Avenue in Phoenix, just north of Thomas Road. Camp West, featuring two outstanding lines of quality campers, Tramper Camper and Travette, and 75 different models to choose from. They've got a camper to suit your needs, your budget, with prices starting as low as $189. Both Tramper Camper and Trevette feature a lifetime warranty for as long as you own the camper. See Tramper Camper with all the luxury of more expensive campers. And Trevette, the Cadillac of campers. And you do-it-yourselfers, you'll find everything you need to build your camper at Camp West. Aluminum skins and windows, ice boxes, stoves, water pumps, water pressure systems. You name it, if they don't have it, they'll get it for you. And remember, for quality, price, and service, see Camp West Industries. Easy to get to from anywhere in the valley. They're at 2802 Grand Avenue, just north of Thomas Road and a block west of Black Canyon Freeway. Camp West is open six days a week, Monday through Friday till 9, Saturday till 5. Remember, before you buy your camper, see Camp West, your volume camper dealer. As we go to the fourth inning, the Dodgers leading the Phillies two to nothing. And I'm sure that your mind works somewhat like ours as you start talking about Richie Allen and the fact that he has struck out consecutively now in his last six at-bats. Willie Davis coming up, so let's wait till Willie has had his at-bats with that 27-game hitting stick of his, and then we'll talk about the record for most consecutive strikeouts. That's not as a pitcher, as a hitter. Willie waiting. He was thrown out by Terry Harmon, the shortstop. Right-hander Wise delivers a drive down the left field line, slicing foul, and it goes into the seats out of play. 
Oh, and Rhonda, Willie. Now the strike one pitch on the way. Wise delivers, nine inside, one and one. Dodgers leading two to nothing in the fourth inning. Atlanta must be doing something in the bottom of the eighth inning. How much, we don't know. Holtzman was relieved by Abernathy. Abernathy was relieved by Aguirre. The 1-1 one -one pitch away, ball two. In that game, it would appear the Cubs have a commanding lead of 8-2. to two. So it remains to be seen what they've done in the bottom of the eighth, but they've changed pitches twice. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Willie Davis. Fastball hit right through the middle, hits the bag, and it's a base hit to center. Willie has hit safely in 28 straight. So Willie Davis hits a shot up the middle. He is now second on the all-time Dodger list of the longest hitting streak. Zach Weed is hitting 29, and Willie will challenge the master tomorrow. So Willie Davis, 28 straight. Here is Wes Parker. Why is it the belt has a look at Davis? He goes, didn't get a good jump. The throw down, there he's in there. Comes off the bag and they get him. He was safe and then called out. As Terry Harmon tried to get him and couldn't, but as he eluded Harmon's tag, he apparently came off the bag, and then Harmon got him a second time. Willie stumbled in getting his break at first base. He did not get a jump at all. So he's out 2-6. And receives the applaud of the crowd as he goes walking off the field. Well, we can tell you a little bit more about that consecutive strikeout by a batter. First of all, they hits to it, naturally. Who would be the worst hitter? Who would be the guy who would strike out consecutively the most time? The answer would have to be a pitcher. The pitch to Parker, low, ball two. Most consecutive at-bats striking out. Bill Hands of the Cubs did it last year. He struck out 14 times in a row. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Foul back. In the American League, pitcher George Brunette of the Angels in 67 struck out eight times in a row. But to a pitcher, that wouldn't be news. What would be the disturbing record, and he is in the books, would be a non-pitcher striking out consecutive at-bats. Here's a 2-1 pitch on the way. Taken for a strike, two and two. That would be held by Adolfo Phillips, formerly of the Cubs, now with Montreal. Adolfo Phillips, three years ago, struck out nine straight times, and he's a center fielder. Here's a 2 2 pitch on the way. Parker takes strike three calls. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. You can charge your purchase of Don't Take Many Months to Carry Out to Fox County Incorporated, 2308 North 15th Avenue, Phoenix, where you can use your Arizona Bank Bank America card. This is KTAR in Phoenix, Arizona. Willie Crawford is at the plate, homered in the second inning. He's one for one. Wise delivers, and it's swung on and missed him. Boy, he had a rip at that. 0 oh, and 1. One other thing, and we'll close the book on strikeouts. The most strikeouts in a nine-inning game, five times by many players. In fact, so many, they don't bother to list them. Here's the strike one pitch to Willie Crawford. Outside, 1 and 1. By the way, with all the fuss and feathers down there in Atlanta, the Braves came up with two. So it is eight to four, in favor of Chicago at the end of eight, and it's raining in Georgia. Here's a one-one pitch on the way to Willie Crawford. Pokes down a shortstop. Harmon gloves it, straightens up, flips across to Allen in time. Didn't get much on his throw. Made it a close play. No runs hit. Nobody left at the end of four. Dodgers two, Phillies nothing. Hey Johnny Weismiller, who did you look up to in all those Tarzan epics? I usually looked up to the monkeys. There were always a few lines ahead of me. And I looked up to my elocution teacher. He taught me how to say, Oh!
Hey, hey, Johnny Weismuller, who do you look up to when your car starts getting ahead of you? That's when I look up to 76. Those guys are real swingers when it comes to keeping my car on the beaten path. When you're looking for someone to look at in you, look up to 76. For product and service that you want to choose, look up to 76. Union 76 dealers know about cars. They live with them all day. Plus, they've got the best gasolines around and 76 revolving credit to help you pay the bill. Drop in. Don't get caught out on the limb. When you're looking for someone to look at you, you look up to 76. Through four innings, the Dodgers leading Philadelphia two to nothing, and so he would not be forgotten. The crowd here at the ballpark applauding Jim Brewer, who is back at Sandinella Hospital. We all wish him well and hope he'll join the ball club shortly. Johnny Callis in the batter. Johnny Callison flied to center in the second inning. Bill Singer delivers, breaking ball, over for a strike, on one Singer straightens up into the windup. He struck out four, his next ball high and away, one and one. He has pitched just three men per inning, so he's faced only 12. He's allowed just one hit, single by Darren Johnson. Callison takes good breaking ball. Strike two. One and two. New York really chewing up the Giants. Well, it figured they have given the California team such a bad time this year. They're leading the Giants eight to nothing now. The end of four and a half. There's a one hopper backhanded by the Golden Glove. Oh, what a play. Parker just calmly walks over and steps on the bag. Boy, the Dodgers are so fortunate over the years. They had as as fine a fielding first baseman as you could imagine in Gil Hodges, and they come right back with a Ron Fairley and come right back with a Wes Parker. So Parker, the Golden Glove, just stuck that one up easily. Darren Johnson fouls it away, 0-1. Final score, Minnesota beat Boston. 6-2, and Jim Perry picked up his 17th. He beat Vicente Romo. Johnson fouls another one away. 0-2. Oh, <laughs> oh, and 2 the count to Darren Johnson. Now the strike two pitch on the way. Fastball low. Ball one. One and two. Singer, hands on his knees, checking signs. Now the one-two pitch, breaking ball, got him swinging, and boy, he's throwing hard breaking stuff. Well, the Dodger Phillies game broadcast coming to you from Los Angeles. If you're planning a shopping trip, here's a shopping hint. Save time, save steps. Look in the yellow pages first. You'll find us a handy buying guide. Five strikeouts, two down in the fifth inning, and Ron Stone, the batter. Stone, left-hand hitting outfielder, hit into a double play, going the other way to shortstop. He takes the strike. Singer throwing hard, particularly a hard curve. On one to count. Singer back overhand and bounced it in the dirt. One ball and one strike. Houston getting magnificent pitching and not much hitting in the last week. Houston might very well have been right up there at the top if they had hit at all, but they have not. And today they're tied up 2-2 in the bottom of the seventh. Stone takes outside ball, 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Denny LeMaster and Luke Walker in that team at Pittsburgh, with Pittsburgh. But Cincinnati's home in the barn. They've beaten the Cardinals 7-5. Now they sit back and wait. 2-1 pitch. Ground ball to the hole, right side. Through into right field for the base hit. 
So Ron Stone singles to right, and with two out, Dave Watkins, the catcher, coming up. Watkins, catcher. Watkins struck out in the third inning, right-hand hitting catcher, 0 for 1. He's done the catching in this series. Mike Ryan, who normally plays against the Dodgers, has a bruised rib cage. Now Watkins going all the way behind the plate. Watkins hit a home run the other night into the bleachers just to the right of the 400 sign, so he's got a little power. He takes the strike. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits for the Phillies. Fifth inning, Ron Stone at first base. The next one inside. One ball, one strike. Singer, a backward glance at Stone, who has a cautious lead. The pitch to Watkins, he jammed him. A foul ball to the right of the plate, and Haller has a play. He comes over and makes the catch. No runs, one hit, a man left. That's the first man left on by the Phils. And at the end of four and a half innings, Dodgers two, Phillies nothing. Despite the fact that we stay pretty much in one place for about three hours when we're doing a ball game, we do get around a little. About 6,000 miles worth on the average road trip, and on the really long ones, it's really too long. And when you're in the middle of one of those trips, say in Chicago in August, and it's around 100 degrees, boy, there are times when you're not averse to dipping your bill in a glass of beer. And I'll tell you one thing you'll discover. In New York, or Chicago, or Atlanta, or Houston... There is no better beer than that comfortable burgie you get back home. No beer tastes better or is colder or wetter or more refreshing than burgie. And burgie is the comfortable beer. Comfortable beer. Easy to drink and still good tasting. Glass after comfortable glass because it's brewed with soft water. There's no other beer like it. And there's no other place you can get it except right around home. Well, I hope you take some home today. Take home six cold cans or bottles of burgie and taste it. You got it right there. And you don't have to travel 6,000 miles to find out about the comfortable beer, Bergie. On the message board, happy birthday to Mrs. Clara West of West Covina. She was among those who were at the groundbreaking ceremonies at Dodger Stadium. A great Dodger fan at the age of 94. Bottom of the fifth inning, two to nothing Dodgers. Bill Sudeikis will start, then Tom Haller and Ted Sizemore. Rick Wise delivers, and the first one to Sudeik is low, ball one, one and oh. Bill taking a bunt. Wise reading Watkins. Right-handers, 1-0 pitch to Sudeik, is chased and missed. He's fooled by that one, one and one. Rick Wise, 11 and 10. Wise is only 24, but he figures to be... Quite a pitcher for many years for Philadelphia. The next one is swung on and missed. He got him outside and now inside in the count one and two. Wise into the windup and the one-two pitch on the way. Chased and missed and Sudeikis was guessing he was going to get another pitch inside and instead Wise out flicked him, came outside and he looked bad striking out. One away, and Tom Haller, the batter. It's the third strikeout for Rick Wise. Haller fouled out to shortstop Terry Harmon. He's 0 for 1. Right hand is pitch. He's taken for a strike on the corner. 1-1. One, one. Mets are here tomorrow afternoon. Strike one pitch is hit to center fielder Johnny Briggs. He's right there. John makes the catch for the second out. That'll bring up Ted Sizemore. Ted has figured prominently in the series. He drove in one run and scored the other in last night's 2 to nothing victory. In the first game of the series, it was Sizemore's base hit, his third of the night, that tied up the game, and the Dodgers went on to win. And today, he doubled and scored a run. So Ted figuring prominently in the Dodger victories against Philadelphia. The pitch to Sizemore. Breaking ball low, ball one, one and oh.
Here's a 1 0 pitch. Sizemore waiting and Wise delivers, and it's outside ball two. Good ball players play until it is just impossible not to play, and Sizemore fits into that category. He played the other night against Montreal with a blinding headache. He said he could hardly see straight, but he still wanted to play. Pitch inside. Naturally, he did not have a good night, but it didn't bother him. He just checked in anyway. Fortunately for Ted, that one headache has since gone. Here's a 3 0 pitch over for Spike, 3 and 1. Sizemore waiting with two out in the fifth inning, 2 0 Dodgers. Wise ready, Rick delivers, and the pitch is low, ball four. So Ted's aboard with a walk. That's the first pass issued by Wise. Well, there. Sizemore sure has been on base a lot against Philadelphia. Seven times in the three games, Sizemore's been on base. They've kept him off base only twice. So seven out of nine at bats, Ted has gotten to first base. He draws the throw and gets back. Sizemore started today at 270. He's stolen four bases. Singer fouls the first one away on one. Two out, fifth inning. Dodgers two, Phillies nothing. The Phillies are not going to worry very much about Sizemore trying to steal. It is certainly not a percentage play for him to go to tie one and one. Singer is not considered that good a hitter. So if Sizemore steals, the odds still are that Singer's not going to pick him up. And if Sizemore is thrown out, then you have the pitcher starting the next inning. So it doesn't figure he'd go. Pitch foul back in the count one and two. Singer with the bat has seven hits, two RBIs. The two hitting pitchers on the Dodgers staff, Osteen with 22 hits, and Sutton with 14. One and two the count. The pitch is popped in the air, foul back of the plate, and out of play in the second deck, directly behind home. Nothing new on the scoreboard. We told you it's raining in Atlanta. It's eight to four Chicago, and the Cubs waiting their turn to come to the plate in the ninth inning. The Mets eight and the Giants nothing in the bottom of the sixth of their first game. Pittsburgh Houston two two at the end of seven. Montreal two San Diego nothing at the end of three and a half. Cincinnati beat the Cardinals seven five. Singer fouls another one away. And hold it there was a balk on that last pitch as second base umpire Vargo. George Myatt goes out to the mound but Wise accused of balking. So Ted Sizemore goes to second base. And Myatt goes out there to talk to the second base umpire. Most of the time, you'll see a balk call by the first base umpire or the plate umpire. Not too often by the second base umpire. But after Myatt finds out why, he apparently is placated and goes back to the dugout. Final score, Detroit beats Seattle 7-2. to Wilson, the winner, Brave Bender, the loser. Minnesota beat Boston 6-2. Washington over Oakland 8-3. New York over Kansas City 5-3. The pitch to Singer swung on and missed and down he goes. No runs, no hits, a man left. And at the end of five, Dodgers two, Phillies nothing. You know, more and more companies today play a lot of different positions in the business world. They're in this and that and about everything. Well, our friend Farmer John continues to stick to the one business he knows best. And that business is sports. Well, maybe that's the reason Farmer John fresh pork roasts, pork chops, and spare ribs are the finest you can buy. Farmer John goes all the way back to the famous corn country for his pork. Then he ships this fine, fresh, eastern corn-fed pork out here alive. And it's U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. Most other packers, you know, ship their pork in frozen or cold storage. Well, that's why Farmer John pork is so fresh and so fresh-tasting. Enjoy a lean, luscious Farmer John pork roast soon. Or how about some sweet, succulent Parmesan pork chops? Or pick up a batch of marvelous, meaty Parmesan spare ribs. So just be sure to ask the butcher for Parmesan pork, a gold medal winner at the California State Fair. Don't forget it, Parmesan. 
Through five innings, the Dodgers leading the Phils two to nothing. And today's centennial celebrity just took his bow, Alex Ferguson, a rookie pitcher in 1921, was the New York Yankees' first pennant-winning team. He spent 17 years in pro ball, finished his career playing for Casey Stengel at Toledo. Alex Ferguson, now retired, lives in Camarillo for the past five years, and we're happy to honor him today as our centennial celebrity, Alex Ferguson. Six innings, two nothing Dodgers. Cookie Rojas, Rick Wise, and Terry Harmon. The Dodgers will have a new face here tomorrow. And with Jim Brewer's sideline, he might very well be dropped right into the fire. That would be pitcher Warren Jenkins. Rojas takes high ball one. Jenkins was purchased by the Dodgers from the Washington Senators organization. And he is eligible to play tomorrow. The 1 0 pitch is popped in the air. Sizemore and Wills go out. Davis comes in. It's Sizemore for the catch. There will also be several other youngsters who will arrive here tomorrow. Steve Garvey, a third baseman and first baseman with a lot of power. And the Dodgers have him as a star of the near future. Garvey will come from the Albuquerque Club. And then Tuesday, a half a dozen players. Bob Stinson, Tommy Hutton, Bob Valentine, John Miller, Von Joshua, and Billy Buckner. So some of the new blood will be here by Tuesday. Pitch to Wise, missing ball one. The next one is swung on and missed, one and one. In Atlanta, it has stopped raining now, so the Cubs will come to the plate, leading eight to four in the ninth inning. Singers, one, one pitch, breaking ball, foul tip, one and two. Bill has struck out five. Wise has struck out four. Singer has allowed just two hits. A single to center by Darren Johnson, a single to right by Ron Stone. Half swing on a breaking ball that Wise held up, and the count two and two. Bill ready in the 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball, hit off first, down the line, slicing foul out of play. Still two and two. On deck, leadoff man Terry Harmon. Two two pitch to Wise. The fly ball to left field, and Moda was playing him over towards left center. It's going to drop inside the line for a hit, and Rick holds on with a long single. Nice throw by Moda to keep the pitcher at first base. For Rick Wise, a good hitting pitcher. That's his 17th hit. He's no slouch with the bat. And the batter will be Terry Harmon. The only thing that would surprise the Dodgers on that, they didn't think that Wise could pull Singer quite that much. Here's Harmon, twice grounded to Will. Singer look at Wise and not holding him on, and the pitch to Harmon is low, ball one. On deck, Johnny Briggs. Halla walks the ball out to the mound to talk to Singer. One ball and no strikes to Harry Harmon. Now the 1-0 pitch is lifted to right center field. Davis is there, backed up by Crawford. Will he make the catch? Wise holding. Johnny Briggs coming up. Say when it comes to winning, Union 76 Racing Gasoline has won more races in the West than any other brand. Royal 76 Premium is the street version of the same winning blend. Your chance to ride with a winner. Briggs, left-hand batter waiting. Takes a breaking ball for a strike. 0-1. On one. John straightened one out in the fourth inning. It'll line drive at Willie Crawford in right center. He hit the ball hard. And on deck, Richie Allen. The pitch outside. One and one to count. Dodgers two. Phillies nothing. Two out in the sixth inning. Dodgers won last night's ball game. Two to nothing. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball. Low. Ball two. And one. 
Chicago failed to score in the ninth, so Atlanta now, at bat, it's last at bat, trailing 8-4. Briggs fouls the next one away, and they count two and two. In the bottom of the eighth inning at Houston, the Astros 2-2 with Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh has made a change. Houston, certainly not out of it, although they are starting today, trailing by four. 2-2 pitch to Briggs. Fastball popped in the air to shallow left. Will's out and looking for help, and he's got it. Mota, and Manny will make the catch. No runs to hit a man left. At the end of five and a half, Dodgers two, Phillies nothing. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. No runs, three hits for the Phils. And Maury Wills to start it off. He struck out and singled. His base hit picked up the second Dodger run in the third inning. And then he was thrown out stealing. So Maury Wills starting it off. Wills, short stop. Will's hitting left-handed. Darren Johnson plays him in on the grass and close to the line at third. And the outfield shading him to left field. Wise reading Watkins' signs. Rick into the windup. And the first pitch to Maury Wills. He takes a bunt, takes low, ball one. One and oh. Now the one oh pitch on the way. Wills runs to bunt, but it's in on the hands, ball two. Tommy Seaver has the Giants by the scruff of the neck in the bottom of the seventh inning, the Mets leading the Giants, eight to nothing. And, of course, Clyde King will be very careful about burning up pitchers in that first game with a second game due up. Here's a 2-0 pitch on the way. Low ball three. The probable pitcher in the second game for the Giants was Don Bryant. Jim McAndrew figures to go for the Mets in the second game. 3-0 pitch to Wills, a strike, 3 one Allen, Callison, and Johnson when the Phillies come up in the seventh inning. So they're stirring around in the bullpen. The pitch to Wills, a strike. Down in the bullpen, Al Raffo gets up, and he's going to start the warm-up, right-handers. 3-2 pitch to Maury Wills. Ground ball, up the middle, base hit. So Wills chimes in with his second hit. He's two for three. And the batter will be Manny Mota. Manny Mota. He's back to the box and grounded to short. Mota around to bunt, takes a breaking ball outside, ball one. Mota has not had a hot bat lately. In fact, against Philadelphia, he is 0 for 6. He is 0 for 10. He has not had a hit in the series. And over the last few days, let's see, he's 0 for 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. He tries to bunt, but the pitch is over his head to the backstop. And down to second goes Wills and holds on. We'll see if it's a wild pitch or not. It's a fastball. Just to give you an idea of Mota, he has one hit in his last 20 at-bats. So Manny has fallen upon lean times. And in the Dodger dugout, his last at bat in the third inning, trainer Bill Bulo is in the corner taking motion pictures of Mota. They'll be developed and studied to find out why the slump. Why one for 20? Al Raffle continues to throw back of pitcher Rick Wise. And Mota waiting. Now Manny will try to go away, of course, to get Wills at least to third. And Maury dancing away, and Wise has to get off the bag. 
2-0 to count to Manny Mota. Final score, White Sox 7 with 3 in the ninth. Cleveland 6. The 2-0 pitch, a push bunt up along first base. Down to get it is Wise, throws Mota out, and on the sacrifice, Will takes third. So Manny in a slump, bunts his man over, and they'll leave it up to Willie Davis. you are in Willis. Willie has done it. He grounded out in the first inning and hit a shot up the middle for a base hit in the fourth. So he has hit safely in 28 straight. Infield up as Willie tries to pick up Wills now. The pitch to him is on the outside corner. Davis if he gets Wills home, will have picked up his 50th run batted in. That's raining again in Atlanta, so time out down there. It's the sticky time of the year in August in Atlanta. Lots of humidity. 0-1 to Willie Davis. Wise set delivers. Willie hits a fly ball to center field, not very far. Briggs for the catch. Wills is going to come anyway. The throw to the plate, he's going to make it. It was not a very good throw by Johnny Briggs. I'm sure he can make much better throws than that one. And Will scores. Willie Davis picks up his 50th RBI. And the Dodgers lead 3 to nothing. So the Dodgers have done it with a home run in the second inning. Sizemore doubled and Will singled him home in the third. And here in the sixth, the pass ball turns out to be the big play. Just as a pass ball was the biggest single play last night. Gave the Dodgers a two to nothing victory. Parker takes a strike. On one to count to West. Grounded a short and struck out 0 for 2. Tomorrow afternoon, the Dodgers and the Mets. The Mets, who are just tearing up California teams. Here's a strike one pitch on the way. High. One and one. The Mets won 16 out of 18 from California teams at Shea Stadium. And the Dodgers, who lost all six back there, feel they owe them a couple of lumps. The one one pitch to Parker outside. Ball two. Pitch is hit back to the right of the mound. Down to get it is Wise, and he throws to first of the out. So one run, one hit, and the pass ball gives the Dodgers the run, and at the end of six, Dodgers three, Phillies nothing. Hey, Sam Kenton, who do you look up to when you want to give a new tune your own personal style? I look to our Rangers. They know our approach and the way we look at things musically and can almost make any tune work. Hey, Sam Kenton. Who do you look up to when your car is out of tune? I look up to 76. The maestro at my Union 76 station and his band of certified servicemen have what it takes to make an engine sing. When you're looking for someone to look at you, look up to 76. For a product and service that you want to choose, look up to 76. Look up to 76 for products and services to keep your car in perfect tune. The people at Union 76 have even worked up an arrangement to help you pay your bill. It's called 76 Revolving Credit. That sounds like a helpful note. When you're looking for someone to look at you, look up to 76. Through six innings, the Dodgers three runs, five hits, and no errors. The Phillies, no runs, three hits, and no errors with Bill Singer just breezing along so far. In fact, he has faced two over the minimum. He's pitched only 20 batters in six innings while striking out five. 
So as we go to the seven, three nothing Dodgers. For more play by play, here's Jerry. Hi, right, Vinny, and here's Richie Allen at bat. Richie has struck out twice. He has struck out six consecutive times now. And Bill Springer ready to work to him. Richie Allen stepping in. It is three to nothing, and here's the pitch on the way. Curve is in for strike on the inside corner. <laughs> Allen waiting, 0 and 1. Now the wind up again in the pitch by Singer. Curve is in high, ball 1, 1 and 1. The Dodgers leading 3 to nothing. They scored one at a time in the second, third, and sixth inning. Now it's the wind up and a 1 1 pitch on the way to Richie. A swing and a drive to center field. Willie Davis there backs up and makes a leaping catch as the ball almost went over him. Willie had to retreat quickly on a line drive that was really knuckling out towards center field. He was in a step or two and then lunged backwards to handle it for the out. So a line drive out by Allen to center. He hit it hard. Here's Johnny Callison at bat. And we'll pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. You can charge your purchases and take many months to pay at Baptist Hospital of Phoenix, 6025 North 20th Avenue, Phoenix, where you can use your Arizona Bank Bank America card. This is KTAR in Phoenix. Callison at bat has grounded out and flied out. And Singer now ready to work to him. The windup and the pitch on the way. Breaking ball is slow. One ball and no strike. Bill trying to get his 17th win. Has a free run lead now as he goes into the seventh inning. Raining again in Atlanta. Bottom of the ninth inning with the Braves coming to bat in an 8-4 to four ball game. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Callison grounds it foul off to the right. One and one. The Pirates make a pitching change in the eighth inning at Houston. Maroney in to relieve Hartenstein. Pitch to Callison. A little high with a breaking ball. Two and one. The Giants and the Mets have played seven now. And the Mets still lead eight to nothing. With Tom Seaver trying for his 19th going all the way in that one. There's a swing and a drive to left field, well hit, going in the corner for it is Manny Mota, and this ball is going to be up against the box seat railing and bounces back toward the infield. Callison is at second, Mota still chasing the ball. Callison goes into third base with a stand-up triple. The ball hit the box seat railing and must have rebounded 100 feet away from Mota. So Manny went to the railing for the ball and then had to retreat back into medium left field to, re to pick it up. So a triple for Callison. So a three-base hit for Callison against the box seat railing in the left field corner as Callison goes the opposite way. And here is Darren Johnson at bat. He has singled and struck out. Grounded foul at the plate. Strike one. Well, Manny ran as far as he could right to the railing, and then the ball hit on the rail about four feet from him, then it rebounded all the way back into left field. And he had to turn around and go back just as hard as he had gone to the railing. He was all alone on the play. One strike, Johnson waiting, the infield back. Dodgers lead by three. They'll go for the out and give up a run. Singer, of course, would like to get the shutout, but he's worrying about winning the ball game more important. Here's the wind up and the pitch to Johnson. Swung on and missed, strike two. Singer has struck out five, has not walked the batter. So Bill ahead of the count. Now the pitch on the way. Johnson is a ground ball to the right side. Parker up with it. Will throw to first base. The Singer covering as the run scores. So Johnson grounds out as Callison comes in with the first Philadelphia run. And here's Ron Stone coming up. He has singled and grounded into a double play. So a triple by Johnny Callison and a ground out by Johnson to get the run in. Stone hitting 242. They're playing again in Atlanta. And Regan is pitching now for Chicago. So they use Holtzman to start, Abernathy, Aguirre, and uh, now Regan. Here's the ground ball to Wills. It's throw to first in time, and the inning is over. The Phillies show one run on one hit, and none left. The score at the end of six and a half innings, Dodgers three, Philadelphia one.
Well, we're celebrating baseball's 100th anniversary this year, as you've probably heard. And there's another little celebration going on, too. The Burgermeister Brewery's 101st anniversary. 101 years ago, right there where it is today, at 10th and Bryant in San Francisco, the first brewery that makes the comfortable beer opened its doors. By way of congratulations, you might lift a glass of that soft water brew and say, Bergie, you old son of a gun, happy 101, and have a good day. seventh inning. Good crowd on hand today, standing for the seventh inning stretch with Crawford, Sudeikis, and Haller. Threw a pair against right-hander Rick Wise. Wise and Singer locked up in a ball game today, and at 3-1, to the Dodgers lead, scoring one at a time in the second, third, and sixth inning, with Philadelphia getting a run in the seventh. They're playing again in Atlanta. The rain has ceased, as we told you. And Regan now will try to retire the Braves and get the Cubs a win in Atlanta. The Cubs move to Cincinnati tomorrow. Willie Here's Willie Crawford at bat. The Cubs and the Reds have a suspended game to complete. They played seven innings in the game earlier, and they had to call it because of a curfew. Crawford fouls one away into strike one. And in that game, the Cubs are leading five to four. They will finish that game on Tuesday. So the Reds are one run down with a couple innings to go against the Cubs at home. And that game has not, of course, been put into the standings as yet. Here's the pitch on the way. Inside low for ball, one and one. If the Cubs win that game, then the Reds actually would have their 58th loss as of now. They have 57, and the Giants and the Dodgers each have 58. So they'd be all even on that loss side. The one-one pitch. Outside, ball two, two and one. Of course, they will not put that in the standings until Wednesday morning. So it does not come up until Tuesday night. Houston scored twice in the eighth and now leads Pittsburgh four to two. Going to the ninth. Two one pitch to Crawford. Pops into short center field. Waiting for it is Briggs and makes the catch for the out. Crawford lost his bat on that one. Fly ball to center, one down, and the batter will be Bill Sudeikis. Go back in the lineup after a, about 10 days off with illness. Has grounded out and struck out, batting 241, 13 homers, and 50 runs batted in. Well, Chicago beat Atlanta 8 to 4 as Regan got him out in the ninth inning. So Chicago wins that one, and Atlanta losing in a wild one in Georgia. Now the pitch to Sudeikis inside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Before today started, the Dodgers were a half a game ahead of Atlanta. And now they're trying to pick up another full game on the Atlanta team. Pitch low, ball two, two and oh. Two nothing count. Wise delivers to Sudeikis, a bouncing ball to the right side of the mound. Wise up with an underhand toss to Allen in time, two out. Sudeikis bouncing out, pitch to the first. Postman, the winner, he is now 16 and 8, and Nico, they lose their 18 and 12. They have 33,000 in Atlanta today. Into the ninth inning, New York leads San Francisco 8 to nothing. Al Oliver, a home run for the Pirates in the ninth. That leaves them one run shy. With Houston leading 4-3 playing in the ninth. Here's Haller. 
0 for 2, Wise ready to pick. Line foul off third base and down in the lower stand. Strike one to Tom Haller. Tommy Seaver on the way to his 19th, and he would be first in the league to reach 19 as Necro has failed today. Haller hits a liner into left field near the line. Coming on a Stone makes a sliding catch for the odd. Nice play. Stone, who carries the glove on the right hand as he throws left, came skidding along to catch that ball and take a base hit away from Haller. Side out in the seventh, and the score at the end of seven innings of play, the Dodgers three and Philadelphia one. Well, friends, in his own way, Farmer John's a lot like a good switch hitter. Batting on the meat department side of your market, he's sure to make a hit with his Farmer John ham, bacon, sausage, and fresh pork. And when he moves over to the delicatessen side, he's just as much at home. There you'll find Farmer John's plump, juicy, all-meat wieners and his fresher-than-fresh Farmer John luncheon meat. Farmer John luncheon meats are the finest you can buy, made with fresh eastern corn-fed pork and fresh, lean, juicy, homegrown beef. And Farmer John uses only natural herbs and spices, never any artificial flavorings or seasonings. There's a wide variety of Farmer John luncheon meats, including Farmer John all-meat bologna, Farmer John spice-cooked ham, liverwurst, salami, and more. All your favorites and all strictly fresh. And all gold medal winners at the California State Fair. So look for Farmer John luncheon meats in the delicatessen section of your market. And if you don't see them, don't be shy. Ask for them all together. Farmer John. Through seven innings, the Dodgers leading three runs, five hits, no errors. The Phillies, one run, four hits, no errors. Bill Singer against Rick Wise, and the Phillies come to bat now in the eighth inning. Singer warming up with catcher Tommy Haller. Let's go back to the action, and here's Finn. All right, Jerry. Eighth inning, three to one, Dodgers. We'll have Larry Heisel. Heisel will come up and bat for catcher Dave Watkins with Rojas on deck. The Phillies trying to make a move here in the eighth inning, and Bill Singer ready and delivers. And the fastball, a strike to Heisel, 0-1. Larry is Philadelphia's nominee for candidate of the year. Heisel hitting 266, has 20 home runs, 56 runs batted in. Strike one pitch inside, 1-1. One one. Heisel has a lot of power, but as a rookie, he pays for it. He strikes out a great deal. It is conceivable that Heisel could break the strikeout record. He takes low ball two. He has played in 125 games. He has struck out 143 times. 2-1 pitch to Heisel. Swung on and missed, strike two, two and two. Paid attendance, 19,357. 19,357. Sure hope you'll spend Labor Day with us. The Mets will be here. Pitch fouled away by Heisel. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Heisel. Breaking ball, got him looking. So that's 144 times the young fella has gone down on strike. That'll bring up Cookie Rojas. Another fella who has struck out a great deal. We don't have the numbers handy, but he's right around Heisel. In fact, he might have struck out even more than Heisel. Is a great kid player with the Giants, Bobby Bond. He strikes out a lot. Cookie Rojas takes the strike, going one. On deck is Mike Ryan, who will bat for Wise. One out in the eighth, three to one Dodgers. Singer's breaking ball stayed inside, one and one. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Line drive off Singer's glove, and he deflected it back towards the third base foul line. Throws it through Parker, but it's backed up by Willie Crawford. Boy, was that thing hit like a shot, and it was like hitting a line drive into a revolving door. It went in, spun Singer around, and came flying out of his glove back towards the third base foul line. So that is indeed a hit. 
for a cookie Ross. He almost took the webbing right out of Singer's glove. So the batter will be not Mike Ryan because Ryan, as soon as there's somebody on base, is a chance to hit into a double play. So they switch and now bring up Rick Joseph. And Ryan has not yet been in the game. So make it Rick Joseph hitting. Ryan can still be used later on if necessary. Ray Lamb and Pete Mickelson moving around in the Dodger bullpen. One out in the eighth, three to one Dodgers. Still a lot of baseball left in this one. Joseph, right hand batter, hits the first one foul off first, back into the crowd, 0 1. We have almost 25,000 in the park today with 19,357 paid. The next one is low, one ball, one strike. One and one to Rick Joseph. Terry Harmon, the shortstop on deck. Singer's one one pitch. Joseph takes in the dirt, ball two. One one. I think the first time the Dodgers ever saw Rick Joseph was in Philadelphia. He came up as a pinch hitter with the bases loaded against Ron Paranowski and hit a grand slam home run, so they marked him well. He's hitting 283. Joseph waiting. The 2 1 pitch way inside. Ball three. Three and one. So Singer struck out Heisel. Got Rojas a smash off Singer's glove for a base hit, and he's fallen behind to Rick Joseph. Three and one. Terry Harmon on deck. 3 1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. He might have chased ball four. It was a questionable pitch. Three and two. Big pitch for Singer. He certainly doesn't want to put the tying runs aboard. And he comes three, two. The runner goes, swung on and missed. Throw down to Sizemore. They double up Rojas. So the double play, K2-4. Bill Singer gets his seventh strikeout for the Phillies in the eighth. No runs, a hit, nobody left. And at the end of seven and a half, Dodgers three, Phillies one. Camp West Industries, located at 2802 Grand Avenue in Phoenix, is camper headquarters in the valley. It's the home of Tramper Camper, the quality-built camper that offers more for your camper dollar. And the beautiful Travette, the Cadillac of campers. Camp West features many accessories for your camper. In fact, everything that goes in, on, or around the camper. If the call of the desert, a rushing stream, tall pines, and the outdoors is your pleasure, a camper is the answer. Build your own. Camp West Industries has everything you need to do just that. But whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or prefer the ready-made type for quality campers and camper accessories, the place to see is Camp West at 2802 Grand Avenue. Easy to get to. Just north of Thomas Road and a block west of Black Canyon Freeway on Grand Avenue. Camp West is open six days a week, Monday through Friday till 9, Saturday till 5. So before you buy your camper, see Camp West, your volume camper dealer, for quality, price, and service. That's Camp West Industries, 2802 Grand Avenue in Phoenix. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Dodgers three, the Phillies one. It's all over at Candlestick as the Mets beat the Giants eight to nothing. That's the first of two games. Jim McAndrew and Don Bryant, the Probables, in the second game. And remember, the Mets will be here tomorrow afternoon. Jim Bunning will draw Jerry Kuzman as his opposite number. Mike Ryan is the new catcher, and Al Raffo is the new pitcher. The pitcher is batting seven, and the catcher batting ninth. So Ryan hits ninth. And Raffo hits seven. Rick Wise went seven innings, allowed three runs and five hits. 
He walked only one, struck out three, and he leaves trailing. Here's Sizemore. It takes Raffles' first pitch and his misses. Ball one. One and oh. Sizemore has doubled and walked. Raffles comes back with a pitch outside. Raffle pitches like an extension ladder. He starts to deliver and deliver and still deliver before he finally gets there. He's a big fella. The 2-0 pitch, low ball three. So Sizemore, who's been on base seven out of nine times in this series, trying to make it eight out of ten. Phillies have been unable to keep more of the base pass. The 3 0 pitch is high. He's on again. Eight out of ten. Teddy has gotten to first base. He has really been a thorn in the side of the field. And Bill Singer coming up. Bill Singer. Bill Singer has allowed one run, five hits. It's a well deserved round of applause. Singer got a little ground ball by Richie Allen. He got his man over to third and then struck out in the fifth inning. He's over two. Raffle off the rubber. There's a bunt to Raffle. The right hander throws down to Harmon for one. Back to Rojas. Double play. So the double play goes one, six, four. Raffo to Harmon to Rojas. Just like that, two out in the eighth inning. Raffo talking to Harmon, and Maury Wills consuming a little time, allowing Singer to get back to the dugout. Al Raffle was born in San Francisco. He's 6'5", 210 pounders. He attended L.A. City College. He graduated from Los Angeles High. Al Raffle. Line drive, base hit, and Wilkes is three for four. So Morris struck out his first at bat, and he has consecutive singles since then. That'll bring up Manny Mota. In case you have not been with us until just a moment or so ago, Willie Davis singled up the middle in the fourth inning. So he has hit safely in 28 consecutive games. So tomorrow, Willie will be going after the all-time Dodger record. That's just one bit of spice to what should be a great Labor Day afternoon here. The Dodgers and the Mets, Jim Bunning and Jerry Kuzman. The pitch to Mota, low and inside, ball one. Mota fighting a slump. Bill Bueller is taking more pictures of Manny right now from the far corner of the Dodger dugout. And they'll study and see what brought it about. He's one for 20. Throw to first, Will's back to the bag. Boy, it is so tough in the big league. One little thing can wreck everything. And the Dodgers will try and take Mota's swing apart and figure out just what. Raffo is watching Wills at first base. 3-1 Dodgers, bottom of the eighth. It's getting to be standing room only again in the Wild West. Wills goes. The pitch swung on and missed. The throw down. He's in there. And he actually kicked the ball away from Terry Harmon who tried to whirling tag. So Mori, who had a streak of nine consecutive steals and it was snapped in the third inning, starts anew. It also means he has stolen nine bases in his last seven games. So Mori is running at just the right time. He's stolen 20 bases as a Dodger, 36 for the year. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and instead Raffle backs off the rubber. Next one to Mota, missing ball two, two and one. Houston leading four to two, going into the ninth inning. And Al Oliver hit a home run in the ninth. And the Pirates are still at bat. 
uh, Houston is hurting in the ninth inning. Blasingame and Billingham have both come in. Raffo delivers. Motor takes low and inside ball two. Gladding also came in after the home run, we believe. There have been Lamaster started the ninth. Gladding, Blasingame, and Billingham. So Houston struggling. Three and one to count. So Atlanta lost, the Giants lost, but Cincinnati won. The pitch, a one-hopper banged into right field for a hit. Will coming, Callison's throw is cut off by Allen. Richie running after Moda now. Gives to Terry Harmon. Harmon running Moda to Rojas, and Cookie tags him out. So it's 9-3, 6-4 if you're scoring, but the run is over. One run, two hits, nobody left. And at the end of eight, Dodgers four, Phillies one. Hey, Mickey Rooney, who do you look up to and... Look you? up to? <laughs> I look up to everybody. <laughs> no, no. I mean, who do you look up to when you're looking for a motor oil that's made for your high-powered cars? Oh, oh, oh that's, that's entirely different. You see, in that case, I look up to 76. You see, they got this new Union Super Motor Oil. It sort of looks down its nose at engine trouble. And it keeps all my cars running like tops. When you're looking for someone to look after you, look up to 76. Look up to 76. Look up to 76. Union Super Motor Oil is new. Made for today's cars. The ones that run hotter and harder than ever. Yesterday's motor oils aren't making it. So Union Super is tougher than it has to be. <laughs> for a minute there, I thought you were trying to make trouble. When you're looking for someone to look after you, look up in 76. Now let's force the station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. Quiet rooms and a tasteful atmosphere, and you can make advanced reservations at reasonable rates at the Coconut Grove Motel, 2012 West Van Buren, Phoenix, where you can use your Arizona Bank Bank America card. This is KTOI Phoenix. Ninth inning, four to one Dodgers as they bid to sweep Philadelphia and then prepare for the Mets. Gee, that sounds strange, doesn't it? For so many years, you talk about, well, a battle with the Phils and then hope to get rich with the Mets. Well, not anymore. Barry Harmon takes the strike. The Mets ripped up the Giants eight to nothing in the first game today. They still have another to go at Candlestick. Here's the strike one pitch to Harmon. A ground ball speared by Sudeikis. Still throws him out. One out in the ninth inning. Johnny Briggs, the batter, and Richie Allen on deck. Johnny Briggs has popped up, lined out, and flied out. He's 0 for 3. Bill Singer. Good hard stuff. He has struck out seven today. Bill delivers, fastball away, ball one. He's had a particularly hard breaking ball. One and oh. The next one to Briggs, a strike. The New York Mets, who will be here tomorrow, enjoyed the best month of August of anybody in the National League. The 1-1 one, one pitch is grounded foul into the Philly dugout in the count one and two. As of the moment, counting the victory in the first game, the Mets won 21 out of 30 in August, and they still have a second game to go. So they have played great ball, and they're here for three, starting at 1 p.m. tomorrow. One and two to Johnny Briggs. Singer into the windup, and the 1-2 pitch outside, ball two, two and two. Singer trying to win his 17th. Osteen won his 18th. Bunning will try and win his 12th tomorrow. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside with a fastball, ball three. Thing popped out of Haller's mitt, rolled over his shoulder, and went right behind the umpire, three and two.
3-2 pitch. Fastball line drive inside the right field foul line. And down the line, Briggs hits the bag and moves on to second base with a line drive double. So a one-out double by Johnny Briggs, and that will bring up Richie Allen. Richie Allen struck out the first two at-bats. That gave him six consecutive strikeouts, but in the seventh inning, he lined out to Willie Davis. He takes inside, ball one. By the way, we told you the Pirates were giving Houston a bad time, and they sure were. It was 4-2 Houston going into the ninth, and Pittsburgh came up with four. So the Pirates are leading Houston 6-4, and the Astros now come to bat in the bottom of the ninth against Steve Blass. Four to one Dodgers, one out, the pitch to Allen. Fouled away, upstairs off to the right. One and one. Johnny Briggs away from second base. Allen close stands, waiting. One one pitch, sidearm curve low, ball two, two and one. Richly overly closed, kind of peeks out from around his left shoulder. Singer's fastball is inside and high, ball three. On deck, the fine hitting Johnny Callison, who represents the tying run. So Singer might be tiring, and the Dodgers watching him carefully. 3 1 pitch to Allen. On the hands, foul back as he tried to get out of the way of it. Now, Richie was not swinging. It hit the bat, and Haller out to talk to Singer. Pete Mickelson and Ray Lamb were down in the Dodger bullpen. Three and two to Rich. Haller behind the plate. Singer's 3-2 pitch on the way. Ground ball to Will. Big hop. Morey stays with it. Throws him out. Briggs holding a second. Nice play by Will. That thing almost kangarooed over his head. He went down to get it, and suddenly he caught it off the bill of the hat. So here's Johnny Callison. Callison flied to center, grounded out, and tripled the left when his drive struck the box seat railing and carry him back towards left center field. Darren Johnson on deck. Fastball high, ball one. Looked like Singer was forcing himself a little bit on that pitch, as if he was trying to rear back and get a little extra. So he decides to take a breather for the moment. One and all to count. Singer looks at Briggs. Bill to the plate. Callison, it's a high fly ball into center field. Davis fighting a glare. There's not a cloud up there, and he makes the catch for the out. No runs. A hit, a man left, and it's all over as the Dodgers and Bill Singer beat Philadelphia 4 to 1. We'll have the totals for winning and losing pitchers right after this message. You know, ever since man crawled out of his cave, I guess he's been trying to forecast the future. There were medicine men and star charts, crystal balls, and gypsy fortune tellers. A lot of people still use those methods, along with weather forecasts and space satellites, market predictions from computers, political forecasts from poll takers, and still, you just can't always tell what's coming up. A lot of times, you get fooled. Ah, but take heart, though. I know one small, very comfortable pleasure you can predict every time. That's the comfortable taste of Burgermeister beer. You see that blue, white, and gold label pop off the cap? Watch that sparkling amber blue filler glass. It's clear, bright, and capped by a snow white head. Mm -hmm. If it's burgy, it's going to roll over your tongue so smooth, so cold and refreshing. Well, the only word that really describes it is comfortable, comfortable beer. Even though we still have trouble forecasting the major events, when it comes to light, small pleasures, I want you to know exactly what's in store. So pick up some burgy, and you'll never go wrong. Burgie's a comfortable kind of beer. 
Checking the scores for the Dodgers, four runs, seven hits, and no errors. The Phillies, one run, six hits, and no errors. Bill Singer all the way. He's now 17 and eight. Two and one with the Phillies, four and two lifetime. Rick Wise, the loser, is 11 and 11. The Dodgers have now concluded their year's work with the Phillies, and they won eight out of 12 from Philadelphia. Four of the six played here at Dodger Stadium. The Western Division of the National League is still very much up in the air. One of the big reasons being the Giants, the front-running ball club, still has a second game to go. But the best the Giants could do would be to win their second game, and the Dodgers would then still pick up a half a game and be a half a game out. Cincinnati has already won their game, so technically the Reds are tied with the Giants as of the moment, depending upon the outcome of the second game. So it is still a mess, and it's going to be a wild one right down to the wire for sure. Bill Singer will be our guest on the post-game show, and don't forget, those Mets will be in here tomorrow. Jerry Kuzman and Jim Bunning will spend Labor Day with us, a 1 o'clock ball game, the Dodgers and the New York Mets, and we get underway on the air at 1240. Once again, the final score of the day, the Dodgers 4 and the Phillies 1. Now this is Ben Scully along with Jerry Doggett inviting you to stay tuned for the post-game show coming right up.